Catherine Austin Fitz is our guest. We're talking about the most important subject there is. The global government, the elite, their mindset, how they control the planet, where they're going. Again, Catherine Austin Fitz is a former Assistant Secretary of Housing, Federal Housing Commissioner under Bush 1. The website is solari.com, S-O-L-A-R-I.com. Excellent info up there. Okay, I'm going to try to just sit back and give you the floor because I want you to give people the overview of who we're dealing with, what their end game is, what the next phase of their operations is going to be, and how we stop them, how we get out of this trap of being dependent on them. You notice all they ever want to do is get us more dependent so that there's basically no way to get away from these people. Right. Well, it's a come, you know, <laughs> just asked a big series of about a thousand questions, but let me just start. Because I think I used to have a pastor in Washington who used to say, if we can face it, God can fix it. And and a lot of the solutions accelerate, Alex, the day that everyone sits back and says, you know, these guys are as nuts as Alex Jones says they are. <laughs> because all this stuff about slavery and police state, you know, those are reasonable words. That is where they're going. And, you know, I say this as a former regulator, a former Assistant Secretary of Housing, a former board member of a Wall Street firm, a former board member of Sally Mae, the student loan finance organization. And, and let me tell you what, how I came to that conclusion. And, in, um, you know, my part of my background is doing portfolio strategy for big, you know, I was the FHA commissioner, so doing portfolio strategy for $300 billion of liabilities. And then my company in Washington, the Hamilton Securities Group, built databases of all, you know, sort of community assets and real estate, which is looking at the entire GNP. And then when we compared it to certain things in the securities and global markets, you're talking about the GNP of the planet. So I'm used to dealing in very large numbers and, and actuarial analysis. So, you know, and actuarial analysis says, well, if you stop feeding people GMO food, they're going to live longer. That means insurance companies are going to have to pay out this much more, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, so you're used to dealing in very big numbers and the butterfly effect of, of changes in policy with changes in lifespan. So I, I give that as a background. And I wrote this in the article I wrote. I wrote an essay about why I, I was opposed to the swine flu vaccination. And I literally, when I saw the policies that were being implemented in connection with the rollout of the WTO and the control of agribusiness worldwide, um, the rounding up of innocent people in, in American communities and stuffed into prison and the private prison property. You know, I, went, I went through all the different trends from 96 to 98, and I came to the conclusion sort of back of the envelope that the, the only thing I could conclude was that, is that the leadership as a policy was planning on very significant depopulation worldwide. That was the only way I could explain you know, the 20 policies I was seeing being implemented both here and globally with the WTO, particularly the control of the food supply and system with the with sort of what Monsanto is doing in genetically modified food. And I was very quiet about it at the time, you know, because I knew other people couldn't fathom what I was saying. And I remember in 1998 or 99, a uh, very, very savvy portfolio strategist from the financial community called me up and said, can you have lunch with me? I'm going to be in Washington. And we went to lunch at Union Station, and he looked at me and he said, you know, he said, I, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I I've done the analysis, and if you look at the changes in policies that are being rolled out over the last four years, the only thing I can conclude is they're planning on significant depopulation. And I said, well, that's what my analysis shows. And we just kind of stared at each other. And, and if you look across the board at what is being done in terms of building databases on American citizens, what is being done with RFI, uh, uh, you know, Damn. RFID or R, is it RFID or R, RFDI? Well, they've got a bunch of different ones, but let me just stop you for a moment. Okay. Because you did, you know, as this huge actuary analyst running hundreds of billions of dollars, you saw it. Like if somebody sees a guy pull up in a van and start casing a house and then checking the front door, you think maybe they're about to try to rob us. I have been at the guy's house as a fly on the wall and heard him talk about how he's going to rob. And so separately, 
and of course you know all this now, it turns out for 50 years they've been planning this and building a world government as a means to an end, and all of the tracking, all of the surveillance, all the police state, all of the mind control, the conditioning, is to be rolled out in phases, and we're now coming into the end game. You're coming into to the literally end game. kill eighty percent of people. How do we stop this? And and again, in the phases, they shut the resources off, so then you become dependent on government. So it has you in its kill grid: the drugging, right. the cancer viruses, and the shots, the mercury. I mean, it, it's all happening. I'm right. sorry. Go ahead. Well, the food is poisoning us. The vaccines are poisoning us. On and on and on. Here's here's the thing to understand. Theoretically, there is a way to stop them. There really is a way to stop them because, uh, and it's what the poet said: "We are we are many; they are few." And the reality is, when when will you get a critical mass of people facing what's really going on? And then when you hit that tipping point, what can they do now? Step one is, you know, the key thing to understand what everybody has to do is we have to do what gives us energy. So, um, you know, what we all can't do is get in a bus and go to Washington today. You know, there, there are many ideas of what we can do that waste a huge amount of our time and effort that we don't have. But step number one you can do, and it's one that will give you a lot of energy, if you sequence it right, is get as far away from them as you, you possibly can or the people who implement their wishes so industry. get out of the big cities. I, I say number one, get to know your neighbors. Stop watching as much television. Get healthy. Purify your water. But more importantly, recognize them as the enemy. Right, Don't just believe Catherine enemy. Austin Fitz. Don't just believe Alex Jones. Find out we're telling you the truth, and this is life and death. And then the ball game isn't going to matter so much. And take all your energies and stop seeing Catherine Austin Fitz as your champion. <laughs> stop seeing Alex Jones as your champion. You know she's not Joan of Arc, yeah, and I'm not George your own Washington. Champion. Be your own, the, the, uh, you know, it's really funny. And when you withdraw from people, all your ideas are great, but, but you want to get as financially not dependent on them as possible. So get as far away as you can from government money or money that they control. One of the things that, uh, that is just a profoundly important thing, if everybody tomorrow in the country, Alex, said, you know, any bank that's trading derivatives or got, you know, big or any of the big banks who got bailout money, I'm getting as far away from as I can. So if you pulled your money out of the um, out of the big banks and went to a well managed local bank tomorrow, it would have a profound and dramatic impact. Now you can say, well, all those banks channel money into Wall Street anyway. If I'm the Federal Reserve and I have to negotiate with twenty five thousand bank presidents as opposed to ten it's a very different picture. It's a very different world. Okay? So anything you can do is, it's real funny. I have a, a member of my network who's uh, Jewish, whose family was really hurt in the Holocaust. And he was asking me whether or not he should bank at a big bank. And I said, you know, you're basically asking me whether you should, you should put your money with him or money management or not. Now, why are you asking me that question? Don't you know better? <laughs> But that's what we're doing. We're financing. If you look at any activist group who's opposed to any of the things they say, they let's say the guys are opposed to GMO. Well, if you look at where their money is, they're all financing the creation of GMOs and the building of that infrastructure. When you finance the U.S. government, you're financing genetically modified seed. You're financing the implementation of that. So, so part of it is, you know, withdraw as much as you can, your person, your family, your how you spend your time, don't be financially dependent, but stop financing the very things that are killing you and your family. Absolutely. Now, other solutions. Uh, I, I mean, I jumped in there when you said get as far away as you can from okay, their money. Okay, here's the next solution. Who are you supporting for sheriff this, this, in this uh, local election? Okay, if 3,100 counties... The sheriff, there's dual sovereignty under the Constitution. So, so your sheriff can literally tell the, the federal government to get off, you know, your county property and know they may not enforce something that is outside the Tenth Amendment. Okay, so, so we're coming into election, the election cycle. And the election cycle is always a time, Alex, when you can be talking to your neighbors about all these issues. And let me tell you something. The fact that the bailouts and health care passed without having any kind of popular, sufficient popular support for a change of that extraordinary nature has got people worked up and they're ready to have a conversation. So, 
So number one, you want to get into office the right kind of sheriff, and you want your sheriff. Is your sheriff out there doing crime patrol, or is your sheriff instead spending all of your tax monies foreclosing on people on behalf of the big banks? And trying to squeeze people and raise revenue. We've always promoted Patriot sheriffs, so we're on the same page right. uh, so on that the front. The second thing is, in your state and local areas, you have candidates who are, who are proposing 10th Amendment legislation. So, for example, Idaho passed the Health Freedom Act. We have lots of states trying to, to pass Health Freedom Act. We have lots of states, um, uh, you know, doing a variety of things on the 10th Amendment. There's a ten, great 10th Amendment center online. So you want to find out where the state and local representatives who are active on 10th Amendment, and you want to get hooked up and supporting them.